Hello everyone, welcome to Turkey Talks and today we will discuss the uh, issues related to Afghanistan and Turkey's policy related to Afghanistan with our guest, uh, actually act- act- not guest, co-host Tadi Küçükcan and Kadir Üstün. And uh, let's start with a general question. Uh, we have, uh, since the beginning of the crisis in Afghanistan, the most recent crisis I'm talking about, Uh, there has been a lot of articles, a lot of uh, debates about the U.S. position uh, in regards to this crisis. And we know that Turkey's government position a little bit about this. But I want to start uh, discussing this issue with the general uh, perception of the Turkish public about what's going on in Afghanistan, especially the evacuation of some of the uh, Afghan interpreters, some of the people who work for the American companies, What did Turkish people think about uh, the pictures that was released from the Hamid Karzai International Airport and uh, the crisis in Kabul? Tali can we start with you? Well, thank, well, thank you very, very much, much Kuz. Kuz. Uh, I think uh, Afghanistan deserves uh, a, a very detailed debate. And one part of it, of course, the humanitarian issue. Uh, when Turkish public uh, saw the first pictures coming from uh, Hamid Karzai Airport, I think everybody was uh, shocked because people were uh, running uh, towards the uh, planes. They were trying to get on the planes. And you would remember that some people uh, tried to get on, but they were uh, killed, unfortunately. And I think this humanitarian issue was uh, one of the touching scenes for the Turkish uh, public and Turkish public opinion. Since then, of course, like in many other countries, uh, Turkey has been following the uh, developments in the country, both public and also the government officials. And I think uh, when we look at uh, Turkey's position towards Afghanistan, I think there are some subtle differences between what Turkey thinks and how Turkey will deal with the issue compared to many European countries and also uh, compared to U.S. Uh, Turkey does not uh, see Afghanistan as a country where once upon a time Turkey was there and then Taliban took over the power and then uh, all the other countries left, Turkey will leave as well. This is not the case. And I think there is also an understanding on part of Turkish public opinion, Afghanistan, uh, historically speaking, culturally and religiously speaking, of course, uh, much closer to Turkey than many other NATO allied countries and European countries uh, as well. So from this point of view, when we looked at the uh, uh, situation and uh, the plight of the people uh, in Afghanistan, there was a shock, of course. Uh, And also there was a lot of criticism of the Western handling of the crisis in Afghanistan from the Turkey's perspective. Uh, And, uh, you know, remember that people were trying to jump on the planes uh, and there were there were one or two, I think, um, uh, bombs around the uh, airport uh, and kids, a woman. Uh, The scene was like a hell. Uh, So I think uh, many Turkish people were saddened by what they have seen uh, because this is something that was unthinkable uh, three, four months ago. And you would remember that, uh, I I think it was uh, yesterday in Westminster, when there was a debate on Afghanistan, Afghanistan, uh, one of the ministers ministers, uh, 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 of of the the UK UK government said said that uh, intelligence, uh, UK intelligence community or the NATO intelligence community thought that this year Kabul will not fall to the hands of the Taliban. You can see how grave mistakes were uh, done. And I think uh, people uh, now uh, are paying the price in Afghanistan. And also Turkey, uh, the public, and also, again, I think the Turkish administration has been following uh, what's happening in Afghanistan with concern, with great concern on the one hand, but also with some sort of optimism, I would say. What, you know, where optimism it's comes sad. from? Where optimism comes from? It comes from, I think, uh, from the fact that there is no civil war at the moment. This mm. is where the optimism comes from. When you look at the Western media or the American attitude, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, negative portrayal. Yes, of course, there are many negative issues that are taking place. But also, when you compare to Libya, when you compare to Yemen, when you compare to uh, Afghanistan, to Syria, there is no uh, war at the moment going on. And uh, yes, the state has gone. But there is an opportunity now, there is a possibility that a new government might be formed. Of course, we will discuss this maybe in in more detail, but at least there is that sort of optimism compared to many other countries. Turkey is neighboring to failed failed state state 
uh, countries. And I think uh, it has a lot of experience in terms of uh, dealing with such issues. And uh, rather than becoming, um, let's say, alarmed, uh, uh, Turkey is much more, I think, uh, quiet uh, uh, and uh, patient uh, to put things on, on the right track. Thank you. And Kadir, I want to uh, turn into now uh, the discussion about Turkey's position in regards to Afghanistan. And uh, we were in uh, Brussels in June when the NATO summit was taking place and on the sidelines, President Erdogan met with President Biden. And one of the most significant topics that was uh, released after this meeting was the debate about uh, Afghanistan and the protection and control of the airport uh, Hamid Karzai International Airport by Turkish forces. Of course, uh, Turkish president qualified this statement a lot, saying that there are a lot of conditions that needs to be met in order for Turkey to take uh, this responsibility. So uh, my question is, how did now, since June, it is almost three months, how Turkey's position in regards to Afghanistan and its role in Afghanistan evolved in these three months. We know that there were dramatic changes. And as just uh, Talib Bey mentioned, uh, none of the intelligence agencies were expecting this, especially the intelligence agencies, intelligence community in the US, intelligence community in the UK. Nobody was expecting this, let's say, free fall of Afghanistan uh, and Kabul. So how Turkey's position evolved, how Turkey adapt to these changing circumstances on the ground? Thank you, Kulic. Um, As you mentioned, during the NATO summit, the expectation uh, was that the Ghani cover government in Kabul would stay, would basically survive the U.S. exit. U.S. Uh, was thinking that it would exit Afghanistan in an orderly fashion. It would be able to evacuate whatever, whoever, you know, American citizens and green card holders and uh, special immigrant visa holders. Uh, in a somewhat orderly manner. And then, uh, of course, there were a lot of reports about the fall of potential fall of the government, but everybody thought this would be months uh, after uh, the U.S. exit and NATO forces uh, exit uh, the country. So Turkey's calculation at, the, at that time was also based on these um, expectations, and Turkey said, okay, I'm, I'm willing to connect the Kabul government with the outside world through the airport, secure the airport, and make sure that diplomats and business people, etc., can continue to travel into the country, but I will need support. I will need, I don't want to do this on my own. I don't want to be just, you know, uh, a sitting duck, basically, if there were attacks on the airport. So that was significant, and Turkey mentioned several uh, other NATO countries uh, as potentially helping. Uh, of course, as you said, Ghani government uh, very quickly fell and everybody was flat-footed. Uh, U.S. started a big evacuation operation and Turkey also uh, needed to secure its own forces and people who worked with Turkey directly, uh, translators and Afghan allies on the ground. Um, and of course, um, when there was that, those chaotic scenes, like you guys mentioned, um, nobody knew where this was headed, and we still don't know where this is headed. Is Taliban going to establish a government somewhat stable, and it will, uh, like they promised in international forums, uh, are they going to, you know, respect international law and uh, try to sort of be a responsible member of the international community or not? But of course, Turkey's role in Afghanistan was not only uh, as a NATO country, as we know. Turkey's image was, like Talip Hoca mentioned, uh, was very different on the ground. Turkey's foreign aid programs are not conditional, as you know. So they, uh, they, the humanitarian activities on the ground are often more appreciated than a lot of the uh, Western humanitarian aid that tends to go directly to the government and then there's a lot of corruption. It, it is hard for it to get to the actual people who need it. So Turkey's, Turkey, uh, on the one hand, was part of the NATO mission, but also it created its own image inside the country. Uh, and there, 
calculations over the past several weeks have evolved in that manner. And now they seem to be saying if we're not going to be, if there's not going to be a NATO mission, obviously, uh, it will depend on what Taliban government's uh, attitude is going to be, how they're going to be hospitable or not, and whether they need help and assistance with the airport, we can help that but we are going to need security. So Turkey is being cautious and being careful, but it's not uh, sort of, um, it's not uh, ruling out uh, helping uh, the country stabilize during a potential Taliban government. Of course, the worst case scenario is a potential civil war. Nobody wants that. And I think Turkey keeps uh, looking for stability everywhere it goes so in this case okay, i want to say, interrupt a, a minute and ask you uh, president said taliban president erdogan uh, in a press conference stated that there's a request i'm not sure if it is formal or informal request in regards to running the operations in the yes. airport not the security so what will be the difference providing security at the airport and running the uh, operation uh Actually, running an airport is a re relatively complex issue. As you know, there are ground services. There is, you know, a, a lot of services involved in getting people to, um, you know, uh, travel through a country. And also, of course, there's a lot of uh, uh, sort of um, the services where there's a lot of goods go that go through those airports. So. Uh, I think Turkey is hesitant to deliver those services without a serious uh, assurance of security. It prefers, I believe, that it will secure the airport with its own security and then also provide those services. And I think Taliban is not quite uh, willing to do that. They, they are saying that we can secure the airport. You just run the, help run the airport. And I'm not sure if Turkey is going to be willing uh, to, to send its civilian personnel and uh, technical people who, who know how to run an airport without, uh, without Turkish security or, or, a, or a security that Taliban can assure and Turkey can assess that it's really secure. So, because as you know, for, more, for all countries, their citizens' safety come first. And uh, in this episode, past couple weeks, all those scenes of chaos uh, Turkey doesn't want to jump into a situation where, you know, it will uh, have its own citizens stranded uh, or under attack or potentially uh, killed or injured. So I think that's where the hesitation is coming from. But uh, still, Turkey indicated many times it will stand with the Afghan people. It will do whatever it can to help stabilize the country and have a better future. And let's also not forget Turkey has good relations with Pakistan's leadership uh, that has developed over the past several years. I think for Turkey, the story is not just in Afghanistan. It's a bit regional as well. Can I can I come in here for a, for a moment? Sure. In addition to what Kadir has said, I just would like to share some observations on how Turkish position evolved and will evolve in the near future. I think not only Turkey, but also European partners of US were taken by surprise by the developments because uh, it was, uh, I think, US um, uh, own decision to go into the uh, Afghanistan in the uh, 19, uh, after 2000. Uh, 2000s. Secondly, uh, when it comes to the exit, I think it was again a unilateral decision by the US to leave and there wasn't much of a consultation between US and its partners, including Turkey. And therefore, we can now see the that there is such a chaos in the country and also many, uh, I think, uh, uh, NATO allies and other countries who were somehow uh, involved in the affairs of Afghanistan, uh, they don't have a clear roadmap as to what will happen. But as uh, um, uh, Kadir said, uh, one of the differences of Turkey is the fact that Turkey was also engaged in a lot of humanitarian activities. It was not only security issues that Turkey was uh, involved, but also humanitarian issues, educational establishments, hospitals, roads, and a lot, and a lot of other issues where uh, 
on the on the scene. Uh, therefore, I think one should also uh, take this uh, uh, issue into consideration. Turkey was not there to uh, engage in the nation building process. U.S. was there as uh, as, a, as a you know big power to engage uh, in a nation building process, and there was a lot of I think um, miscalculation on, on on the part of uh, Americans because they thought that with the uh, strong army like three hundred thousand and also with a lot of money that they were uh, investing in the country, they could build up a nation on the Western model of a nation state. I think that was a big failure. And when you look at the ethnic, uh, religious uh, and other tribal issues and minorities and uh, diversities in the country, I think uh, therefore uh, Turkey's position is, I, again, I, I emphasize this differs from other countries. Many, many other countries will leave Afghanistan and they will maybe not look at back again. But Turkey will remain there somehow, at least trying to remain there. That's why when you look at the uh, statements of uh, Turkish officials and Turkish leaderships towards Taliban, uh, Taliban, it is not hostile. It is not very negative. And uh, there is an encouragement that uh, Taliban should uh, somehow uh, involve uh, all the actors in, in the country in order to avoid uh, further uh, destabilization. Do you think uh, that there, there was this uh, question uh, in the Western media if the Taliban would follow the same policies uh, that it followed uh, 20 years ago or are they going to uh, be the same Taliban of 20 years? Does Turkey think that there is a change right now or does Turkey think that on the side of the Taliban there is a realization that it is not sustainable to try to run the country that they used to run 20 years ago? I think uh, one can judge or one can answer this question on the basis of statements, on the basis of uh, discourses and rhetorics. When you look at Taliban's rhetoric, it is softer, it's more moderate compared to 20 years ago, of course. Uh, so this is uh, uh, one reality, if you would like to take it at face value. Uh, uh, on the other hand, when you look at the uh, many other, uh, I think, Islamist movements all around the world, we have seen that over the years they have uh, gone uh, a lot of changes and transformations, that's for sure. And also, if Taliban is uh, serious about uh, running the country, uh, there is no, uh, I think, other way than uh, uh, cooperation with the international community. When you look at the economy of the country, it is uh, in shatters. Uh, when there's a poverty, when there's a lot of, I think, disability, and I think no actor, uh, no matter how uh, you know, powerful it is or how much uh, support it gets from outside, you cannot uh, run the country. I, I think one uh, issue is the uh, outgoing uh, government in Afghanistan. When there is a lot of corruption, when there is uh, no, uh, I think, equal treatment of people, you can see that. So there is that suspicion on the part of, I think, uh, Western audience and as well as people, some people in, in Turkey, but also I think as we can see uh, after the Arab Spring uh, as well, uh, many political parties with Islam's agenda, uh, they have adopted, I think, new language, new approaches, uh, and they have, I think, come to terms uh, with the fact that uh, they have to renew their discourse as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, methodology of governance. Otherwise, uh, their claim that, you know, you can maybe, uh, you, you can, uh, get uh, the government, you can uh, uh, hold power, uh, but uh, how are you going to establish legitimacy if it, you are intending to run the country for long term, if you would like to see stability, wealth of the society? I think uh, there is an expectation, uh, maybe this is uh, 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 more than a reality, uh, that a Taliban, when you look at all the statements from Taliban, there is a mood, there is a, uh, I think, a sign of change, but of course, whether this is reality or not, we can only see it after they form a government, the form of the government uh, and the type of the government, whether it is going to be inclusive or exclusive. Uh, uh, therefore, I think it is uh, at the moment too early to jump the, uh, on the conclusion at the moment. So we have to wait and see, but also we have to, I think, evaluate uh, the uh, process of change and transformation, globally speaking, when you look at the uh, you know radical Islamic movements, once they come to power, once they face the reality, 
education of children, you know, welfare, the security, and they, uh, I think, gradually change. Uh, this is what is ex expected of uh, Taliban. And I think when you look at, you know, the, the 20 years of, uh, uh, I think, um, time passage, uh, you see that there's a new uh, generation of people in, in the Taliban. I think uh, the old people are still there maybe, but also there is a mood of change. At least there is a maybe demand for change. But also, as I said, that, you know, we have to be cautious and uh, we have to uh, wait and see. Kadir, do you want to add something on this? Kadir, uh, of course, Taliban is, is faced with uh, multiple challenges. One, like you mentioned, uh, this is not Afghanistan of 20 years ago. There is about 40 million people. Uh, half of them are, are, they've never been under rule of the Taliban and they don't quite know what it, it might be like. So I think if uh, Taliban were to go to a more extreme form of government, it will get uh, sort of pushed back by the, by the people on the ground. Uh, imagine, you know, people are under um, some Syrians under Assad rule in Damascus, even they are de able to demonstrate. So I don't think uh, in Afghanistan people will simply, you know, go back to 20, 25 years ago, Taliban rule the same way. Taliban at the same time has to deal with uh, the great power uh, struggle over this country as well. Uh, now there will be new uh, patrons, international patrons like China, Russia. Um, of course, Pakistan's influence is going to be the most significant in many ways. Uh, and then it will need to somehow reach out to the West. And I think it can do that with via Turkey, uh, some sort of engagement with the West through Turkey. But I'm not sure how they will be able to handle these uh, dynamics, international dynamics, but also the domestic dynamics where Taliban's leadership uh, is presenting a moderate view to the outside world, but then their young and excited, you know, uh, Taliban uh, fighters members uh, might have a different version of how the country should be run. And then they have various, you know, Al-Qaeda related, ISIS, uh, uh, Khorasan and other terror groups in the country, they're going to have to reckon with that as well. So I think Taliban will need a lot of help, actually, if they're if they're smart about uh, juggling these dynamics, they may be able to keep stability, but it's, it's going to be very, very hard. Uh, and my last question is in regards to the uh, Afghan refugees and the debate about Afghan refugees in uh, Turkey. And uh, we know that this refugee flow has been taking place for a while now, but why, uh, what led to the, uh, the sudden, uh, very uh, somehow uh, very harsh debate in regards to Afghan refugees in Turkey? Is it the, uh, because their numbers were increasing uh, or is it some other uh, opposition parties? What led to this debate to flare up so quickly? Talibur. Kılıç, Turkey has uh, already uh, almost uh, you know, six million uh, irregular migrants refugees uh, in Turkey, okay, mostly from Syria. Uh, and you can see this is, I think, the largest number uh, in the world. Turkey uh, now has been hosting uh, you know, millions of people over the last uh, 10 years. So this has already created a, uh, I think, atmosphere in Turkey, which is quite a sensitive. Mm. It is not because of uh, people uh, from Afghanistan were coming to Turkey, but mm. even before that, there were a lot of discussions and debates as to what will happen to the future of uh, Syrians in Turkey. And also that has created a tension between Turkey and the European Union. I mm. think this is a very uh, uh, sensitive uh, domestic issue uh, mm. with a, a you know, uh, regional uh, implication uh, as well. And on top of that, we have seen a couple of weeks ago a number of uh, uh, Afghanis uh, crossing uh, Iranian borders to Turkey, okay? Between Turkey and Iran, there is a long border, and through that border, we have seen a, no a number of people coming, mostly young people. And it was uh, uh, shared on the social media and by the uh, conventional media. And the opposition parties just uh, 
grab on this uh, issue uh, and they have started well if Turkey is becoming a, again a, a hub for uh, Afghan refugees and when you look at the distance that they were coming from because there is no land border between Turkey and Afghanistan and uh, uh, they came to Iran first and uh, you know after uh, thousands of miles uh, traveling they entered Turkey so and there is a suspicion that Iranians also helped them or at least you know turn a blind eye to those people that they could come to Turkey and that has uh, made a big uh, headlines in the in the Turkish media in the Turkish public opinion as I said there was already a, a ground on which uh, migration issues or refugee issues or irregular migration uh, was sensitive to the Turkish uh, public opinion and the opposition parties went to such an extent that Turkey was going to be occupied by by the by the immigrants by the refugees so that populism I think uh, made a uh, uh, left its imprint on the discussions concerning uh, the Afghani uh, migrants but Turkish uh, states, including uh, all the officials, including Turkish uh, president, said that Turkey will not be receiving uh, immigrants from uh, Afghanistan because Turkey has done its moral, uh, uh, ethical duty by hosting millions of people. Already in Turkey, there are 300,000 uh, people from Afghanistan. Some are officially uh, registered, some are not registered, they are uh, not uh, registered officially. Uh, but it seems that Turkey had its limits when it comes to having new irregular migration. Not because of economic reasons, Turkey can um, manage, can afford more, maybe looking after more migrants, but uh, when you look at the demographic uh, changes in Turkey, when you look at the um, uh, reaction of the uh, political parties constituencies I think not only uh, the opposition parties but also now the governing party is much more careful about handling this issue Kadir do you want to I'd like to actually highlight uh, the US and European role in this because mm -hmm. as you know Europe has uh, treated uh, the migrant issue as a security issue and it tried to kind of keep it in Turkey uh, by reaching an agreement um, with Turkey, providing some funds that were slow in coming, and then they wanted to keep refugees away from Europe by through agreements with Turkey. And that created a lot of uh, sort of uh, anger in Turkey over the, over the years. And then when, as you guys mentioned at the beginning, the U.S., when it decided to leave Afghanistan, it didn't consult NATO uh, allies. It didn't consult the Europeans. The Europeans are upset about that as well. And then the State Department, in an offhand remark, they said they expected Afghans to go to third countries to seek special immigrant visa uh, status or apply uh, to come to the U.S. and Turkey could be one of those countries. So it was received in Turkey as thousands of Afghan refugees arriving in Turkey and being there for years. Uh, so this was like Talib Hoca mentioned, the, the opposition in Turkey used these against the government and government had to react and say that, you know, there there is no agreement with the US about the arrival of Afghan special visa, you know, special immigrant visa seekers. So. A lot of issues were confused, but I would highlight both the U.S. and European role in in uh, basically failing to address the overall migrant crisis in the region, and then somehow seeing Turkey as as kind of um, a, a host or potential sort of buffer zone between between the West and and uh, countries like Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, others. So it's very problematic when the U.S. promised to work with the Western allies and rejuvenate, you know, NATO and the Western alliance, alliance of democracies. But in this great big test of multilateralism, when you're deciding to pull out of the country, you're not consulting your closest allies. So this has been a big problem. And this has been a big problem for Turkey as well. Talib Hoca, I just want to uh, follow up with this question, the European dimension of it. 
because just after the beginning of this refugee flow, we have seen that, I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, it was Austrian prime minister who said they should stay in Turkey. And later we see a similar statement from the foreign minister of United Kingdom saying that uh, they should stay in Turkey at a certain period of time, etc. And uh, this is the second time, probably the third time after the Libyan and Syrian crisis, we see this uh, increasing discord within the European Union and increasing actually ambivalence on how to handle a potential refugee crisis along their border. And uh, are they failing again to find a common voice or common position in regards to Afghan refugees? Because uh, these statements are becoming, and in the next two years, there will be significant elections in multiple different countries in Europe. And just like the previous election uh, in, in which Syrian refugees became a major uh, political matter, domestic political matter in these countries, do you expect the same discussions to take place in regards to Afghan refugees? Khalid, since 2015, when there was a huge uh, number of people going to Europe and Germany took almost a million and some others spread all around, we have seen the rise of this populist and uh, to some extent racist uh, discourse in the Europe. European uh, quarters, especially in the political sphere. We have seen that if you are against immigrants, if you condemn migration, if you keep them away from your doors and from your uh, borders, you can win the elections. We have seen this. I think what you have said has uh, a lot of truth in itself. So, uh, uh, but when you look at uh, the impact of what they have said, actually, uh, especially in countries like Turkey, uh, Turkish politicians, you know, Turkish intellectuals uh, usually advise them to look at the map. Afghanistan is, you know, thousands of miles away from Turkey. And But in their own, I think, mind, since Turkey has been hosting Syrians, Turkey will be ready to host uh, a greater number of uh, immigrants. But what we see, especially in Europe in the last uh, maybe decade, that Europe Union countries especially, they are trying to externalize the immigrant issue, as uh, Kadir has uh, just alluded. They are trying to keep immigrants outside their borders, and if you keep those immigrants or refugees in your country, they can help you. At the moment, we know that the US and European countries are negotiating with some of the regional countries like Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and others. The Afghans can be located there, they can host Afghans, but this is uh, not a solution. As Kadir has said, I, I think many people work for the US and European countries uh, there, and uh, I think they put their lives at risk. And now uh, they need protection, and the European Union, including uh, uh, many other countries in Europe and uh, US as well, I think they have got moral, legal, and ethical duty to look after these people rather than telling them to remain in Turkey or other uh, in, in third uh, uh, countries. Thank you very much, Talib uh, We will complete our conversation here. Uh, and I have a lot of questions about Afghanistan, actually. And I think we will continue to uh, discuss this issue as it evolves, because after especially the capture of uh, airport by Taliban, there are now more questions about the future of Afghanistan, future of foreign missions over there, and future of regional politics, especially the implication of Taliban, not only to Afghanistan, but also to the other conflicts uh, in Central Asia, including uh, the uh, disputes between India and Pakistan, because we know that both of those countries are extremely concerned about developments uh, in Afghanistan. So we will continue to have these discussions. And today we will complete this first, uh, our first, uh, first uh, actually debate on Afghanistan. And uh, hopefully we will see you again next week with a more optimist uh, vision about certain other issues in different parts of the world and Turkey's perception on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.